The problem of replacing missing data with zeros provides us with an opportunity to compare how we might approach this problem using two different kinds of computing paradigms. One, which is called the procedural paradigm, is the approach typically taken with a language like Python, at least Pythons that don't use the pandas packages. The other paradigm, the vectorized paradigm, is what R does basically right out of the box. If I were to compare these two, when you're a beginner Python user, you learn a lot of very granular things about how to step through uh, from one statement in the program to the next. Sometimes you loop back and do other statements over. There are situations where you get to a certain point in the program and then you branch and you do some other bits of code. You might jump into some uh, functions and then jump out of them. And in the end, you end up building and manipulating data structures and then producing some kind of output. So in the end, the end result is similar to what you might accomplish in R. If you get into more advanced Python and you learn how to use pandas and pandas data frames, then you end up getting into the vectorized paradigm. In the vectorized paradigm, you work with entire data structures at one time. Instead of stepping through each row of the data structure, you perform operations on entire parts of the data structure, like a whole column at once. So this kind of a, a paradigm is what we start doing right away in R. We take data structures and read them in from files. We may perform transformations an entire column at a time. And in the end, we do some kind of analysis or visualization, just like we might do in Python, but it's all done using entire vectors at one time. You can code in R in this sort of procedural paradigm, but that's more of an advanced feature. So you can see that in the cases of like Python and R, you can program in either one of these paradigms, but in the be for beginners, one tends to use the procedural paradigm for Python and the vectorized paradigm for R. To illustrate this, I'm going to show you how to solve this problem in Python and then how to solve it in R. In Python, uh, the script has, I don't know, 20 or more lines in it. Um, part of the code defines a function just for reading the file in uh, to the code and to assign it to an object. So you open a file object and then you create a dictionary reader object from that. You create an empty array and you step through the dictionary reader object one line at a time. You add each line one line at a time to this array object that you've made and then you return it. So when we use this function, we read the data in following those steps. Then we could create another uh, list where we are going to assign the uh, values that uh, have been processed. We have a loop where we step through each row of the data table one at a time. If the value for the column is the empty string, then we add in a zero. But if the column is not an empty string, then we put we use the value that's already there. And then we go back and we step through and do the next row and the next row and the next row and the next row. And when we're all done, then we calculate the mean. So you can see this involves a lot of looping and jumping into functions and so on. Uh, that would be the procedural approach. Let's go ahead and try this with the actual code. Here's a Jupyter notebook where I have the Python code placed into two cells. The first cell is going to define that uh, reader function and then I'll actually read the data in. So let's run that cell. Then here is where I step through each of the data that I've read in and check one line at a time. Is the value in the Asian column the empty string? If so, add a zero. If not, just put the value into the resulting uh, list and then calculate the mean. When I execute that code, the mean is 21.47.